If I run this, I'm going to select the form and press F5, and it runs the form in Excel. I'm going to enter the number. Now that's kind of inconvenient, isn't it? It would have been nice if the insertion point were already in the form, or in the text box. I don't think mine was. Let me try running it again. When I click on this, my insertion point is not in there. So that's kind of an inconvenience. We would definitely want the form to come up with the insertion point in the text box. And yours may be in there already. Now, it would have to do with whether the form has the focus. You could say set focus to that text box when the form is activated or when it loads. Uh, you could also set the tab index to zero for that. But right now, when I click on the form, nothing seems to be getting the focus. So I'm going to go back to my code. By the way, there are different events. We probably ought to look at this. Let's look at the form itself, the user form. Notice it has these different events. There's an activate event. There's a deactivate event. A form has to be loaded in memory. I don't think we've talked about this yet, so let's talk about these. A form has a load event that occurs when it loads, and that's loading into memory. It has a show method. which says, make it visible now. Obviously, it would have to be loaded into memory before you make it visible, before you can show it. So if you say show without it being loaded, it will load it first and then show it. So you can use the show method, and it will automatically load it first and then show it. The analogy that used to be used was a Kodak carousel slide projector, which young people may never have seen. There used to be a thing called slides that were made from film and you stuck them in a carousel and the carousel would drop a sl slide at a time in front of the bulb in front of the lens and project it onto the screen. So you would load the slides into the tray that's the equivalent to putting them in memory but you don't see them on the screen till you show it and drop it in front of the lens. So there's a show method, a load event. Load event, load is in memory, show is on screen. I better make sure that I am using these terms correctly. Let's go to load show the load statement and the show method. I stand corrected. It has a load statement. You say form.load or maybe it's load name of form. I have to look. There's a load statement, a show method. Let's look at the opposites of those. There's a hide and there's an unload. The hide method, and I believe it's the unload statement. So form has a load, a load statement, a show method. It also has a hide method. Remove from view. And an unload statement which is unload from memory. Obviously, if you unload something from memory, it automatically disappears off the screen. So unload will hide it and then unload it because it disappears from the screen and now it's not even in memory. Showing will load it first. Now, the reason these things are important is that often we have multiple forms that the user is going to use. Typically an application has a startup time. 
it takes a little while for everything to get loaded. And what is happening there is a lot of things are being loaded into memory so that they are instantly available to the user. So you can load everything when the application opens but not show anything till they click a button. Then you show the form and you don't have to take the time to load it. If there were huge things to load, then you do it all on the front end and then you just show and hide them as the user needs it or doesn't need it. These things also happen in a certain order. It's usually not important to know the order except when you're using it and it makes a difference. For instance, let's look at the workbook. There's an open event when the workbook is opened. There's also an activate event when the workbook is activated. Which would you guess comes first? Open I would guess open would come first and then activate. How could we find out for sure? Well, we could put a message box and say open event occurred and we could do a similar thing with the activate event and see which box comes up first. So I'm going to save this and now I will open that workbook says the open event occurred, then the activate event occurred. And sometimes you might try to code something in the open event and it doesn't happen because it hasn't finished opening yet. In other words, there's a time frame. Oftentimes it's better to code things in the activate event because that's something that happens instantly. It's already loaded into memory and then you click on the workbook and it's activated. So sometimes you can put something in the open event and it just will not work because it's running the code before it has actually opened. So that's a nice thing to know that those two things are different. All right, let's go look at our code again. We were looking at our form. Let's look at the directions. We want a for next loop to be in the count to button. Now again, this isn't the only way to do it, but in the count to button, when they click on it, first I'm going to dim some variables. This is the number that the user enters. User enters in text box. This is long string built from looped results. And then this is just a counter for the loop. The nice thing about a for next loop is it's almost impossible for it to become an infinite loop because of its syntax. It says start with the counter equal to this, go till it equals this, and always increment it every time you go through the loop. The way we normally get stuck in an infinite loop is we forget to increment the counter or something happens where the counter never gets to the condition that stops the loop. But a for next loop, it's sort of foolproof because if it's not going to end, it won't even run it. If the end value is smaller than the start value, it won't even run it.